hi guys welcome or welcome back to my channel just so you know it's my birthday next day so my birthday was yesterday so i don't know how else to refer to today so this is my birthday's my birthday's next day if that makes sense and i know it doesn't make sense okay don't worry my birthday was yesterday get ready with me while i tell you seven biggest lessons i learned within the last one year i'm starting off using my Pareto serum this is a Korean skincare that I worked with recently and I have been loving this serum. It has made a whole lot of difference in my skincare routine. I do love it genuinely. Number one, procrastination will kill your dreams. I'm telling you the truth. Procrastination is the worst thing you want to do for yourself. Procrastination is more expensive than you can imagine. No matter what you do in this life, I'm telling you I learned the hard way. Do not allow yourself fall into that trap of procrastination. Like the moment you start seeing yourself every day, I will do it later. Or when this happens, I will do it. You are in the trap of procrastination. And I'm telling you, it will kill your dreams faster than anything else. No matter how hard it gets, do not let yourself fall into the trap of procrastination. I'm not even kidding you. Honestly, if you know how many dreams have died, if you know how many people would have gone to like a level that even their brains cannot comprehend you would never allow yourself procrastinate i know it's easy to fall into that trap because life happens but the truth is that when you master the act of just being able to get things done i'm telling you that you are halfway through where you want to be in life that is like for me the most important thing because being able to just start for a lot of people is just to send that one email for a lot of people is just to send that one text message for a lot of people is just to make just one phone call and everything else will pick up from there. I'm telling you the truth, that one email, that one text, it sounds easy, but that is the reason why a lot of people will never advance to the next level. Procrastinating, waiting for the right time. Like I need you to understand that there can never be a right time. There would never be a right time because life will always life. Honestly, for some people they said, oh, when the baby grows a little bit, now the baby has grown and the baby needs to go to daycare and the baby needs to, you know, um, advance and do other things that would now require even more of your time. Some people will say, oh, okay, when I lose weight, I'll start. Honestly, people are winning even with being plus size on the internet. Some people, you know, you're meant to start a business. You're waiting for, oh yeah, when I have so, so, so amount of money. I'm not saying don't make plans. All I'm saying is that there will never be a right time for 90% of the things you keep procrastinating. Like the earlier you begin to get on with it, take baby steps. Like the God who brought that idea to you will not leave you hanging. Like you need to understand that God has even figured out every single thing out. Like everything you're worrying about, God has it all figured out like if god didn't think you were capable he wouldn't have given you the idea he wouldn't have given you all the opportunities that keeps coming your way he wouldn't have brought all these things to your mind because he knows you are more than capable of using that gift of using that thing that he has given you to make everything you need for your life to to achieve the life of your dreams if he felt it wasn't enough he would have given you more than you needed there was a time in my life where I constantly doubted my abilities. I was always procrastinating, doing certain things. And because I felt I wasn't, like because I felt, I wouldn't want to say the word qualified, but because I felt that I wasn't there yet. I don't know if that makes sense. But then like the, long, the closer I got with God, the more I understood that if God wanted you to be more than you are right now or to have more than you have right now, God would have made it possible. He is the Almighty. Come on, like He has everything under control. So you need to understand that the reason you are where you are is because this is where you're meant to be. And everything you have right now, the people you have access to, the resources you have, and everything you have is exactly enough. It's enough of what you need right now. So quit procrastinating and waiting for when it feels like, oh, things are better than they are right now. Honestly, if God wanted that, God would have made it possible. But if God has allowed things to be the way they are, it's because he wants you to make something 
out of what you currently have. Start with whatever you have today and everything else will fall in place. If only we understand the power that we have within us, honestly, like a lot of us would just keep procrastinating, telling ourselves, oh yeah, it's, when, it's because of this that I'm not doing this. All those excuses don't make any sense because people are winning with far less than what you have right now. Number two biggest lesson I learned in the last one year is that nobody is coming to save you. The earlier you understand it, the, this the better. Nobody, I mean nobody, absolutely nobody is coming to save you, right? Even somebody who is born into, you know, a, a very well privileged um, background, there's still a lot of things that nobody can do for you. I need you to understand that, like, whatever you want to achieve in this life, God is the only one you have. Get to work you have more than enough resources even on the internet like nobody is coming to save you nobody will wake up and say okay guinea come now let me hand you the life that you dream of it's your dream you are the one that has to go make it happen there was a time that when i was way way younger i used to i used to feel that oh maybe one day my dad would just wake up and say okay he was testing us these were literally the things you know after watching some movies you see things that happened in those movies and your mind will start making you believe that that is reality. My dear, it's far from reality. There's nobody that is coming to save you. I used to think that one day my dad would just come and say, okay, Ginika, we're just playing a prank on you and we wanted to see if you'd be diligent. My dear, that's not, that's not happening. That's not happening anytime soon. So why don't we just learn to embrace the reality that this is the life that we have. This is the life that God has given us and make the best out of it. Honestly, like I'm in that period of my life where I call this period of my life yes sir like that means anything God says my response is yes sir anything that God says my answer is yes daddy like that's actually how I feel in this season of my life and in the season of obedience like whatever I wake up and I know that this is what God has put in my heart to do even when it doesn't make sense my only response is yes sir like I'm not even trying to figure God's work for him or do his job for him. I am just going to do my own understanding and bearing in mind that this is the life I have. Nobody's waking up to give me a new life. Nobody's waking up to hand over my dreams to me and say, take it. You're, you've worked hard for it. Just take it. Nah. You're going to walk yourself into those realities that you envision. Honestly, like what I do, what I always tell people to do, and I have been doing this and it has been working for me. Write down everything you envision for your life. Write every single thing down. If you know whatever it is that you really want in life, like if you are dreaming of living in a very fancy house and you know that this is not the reality you're born into, write it down. Write down every dream that you have. Write down everything you see. I'm telling you, I did this thing sometime last year. <laughs> there's, there's something about manifestation. Once you have accepted the fact that you don't have anybody coming to save you, God is all you have. Like God can literally change your life overnight. But you have to do the work. You're not going to sit around and say because you have a God of abundance, then every other thing is no. Even God in the Bible, if you read through the Bible, you see the places that God said, do this. God will tell um, um, well, even when uh, Moses, Moses divided the Red Sea, God said, use your road. There's always an instruction. Your own instruction can be post that content. Your own instruction can be send that email. Your own instruction can be send that text. Your own instruction can be make that phone call, right? At the end of the day, there is something that God wants you to do, right? And that thing that God wants you to do is going to be the thing that will now open the door for your next level. I don't know if that makes sense, but the point is without you doing your or obeying the instruction, you are not going to be able to access that next level, right? So you have to learn to live in obedience, right? It's not, it's not all fun and games all the time. It's all about obedience. There's a season of your life you're just going to be like, you know what? I'm done playing games. I'm in my season of obedience. Whatever God you're telling me to do, I would do it and I'm just going to trust you. That is the season I am, that I am right now and I really want to welcome you into that season because one thing is for sure, our God is a God that never fails. Like, if you have that assurance, why are you worrying? Like, I want you to write down every single thing you see yourself. Write down every single thing you envision. One thing I do is I write down everything I envision. I write down the life that I see that I want. Like I know I can see it in my head. I can see when I close my eyes, I can see. Write it down. When you write it down, you now want to pray over that every single day. 
have them in little notes in my filming studio. So when I come to the studio to film and I'm praying and inviting the Holy Spirit to take control, I say the prayer. I say, God, these are the goals I've written down and I'm in agreement with your word. So you need to understand that you have to be in agreement with the word. So I'm basically, it's like a triangle. You have given me this instruction. This is what you want me to do in my life. Now, this is me in the studio to obey you. I've come to do what you said I should do, right? You said I should make content for my audience. You said I should do so. Even when I want to go and sleep, I'm thinking of content in my head because I want to obey you. I want to be in obedience to what you have asked me to do, right? Now, this is my request. So you obey God first and then you present your intentions. That is exactly how it has worked for me. This thing works like magic and I'm telling you, try it and you'll come back to thank me later. Number three advice I would give my younger self is, Ginika, do it afraid. Do it when it doesn't make sense. Do it when you cannot even explain what you're doing. Do it when you are so afraid of the outcome. Do it afraid. I need you to understand that every single person that you see, that you know, you admire how far they've come, their achievements and all of that, you need to understand that at some point in their life, they had to take some decisions afraid. Sometimes, some point in their life, they had to take some decisions that they couldn't even understand if this was the right decision. I always say that if God puts something in your heart and you think about it at least once or twice in a day, God wants you to do something with that. Do it afraid. Do it when it doesn't make sense. Do it when you don't have the funds. And allow God to figure every single thing out. I'm not saying you should go and take, you know, make um, blind decisions without really thinking. But when you know that God has put something in you, don't keep waiting and trying your, uh, and trying your within your own power, trying to see how you're going to figure everything out by yourself. Do it afraid. Do it when it doesn't make sense. I'm telling you, like, the biggest things that happened in my life were things that when it, were, it was happening or when I was about to embark on them, I couldn't explain what I was doing right maybe the only person i would have mentioned it to is my husband because and i know that deep down inside my mind i used to tell my husband that like i used to feel like sometimes maybe when i'm telling him some of these things and I, inside my mind i'm like and i know that this man looking at me like this girl do you really know what you're doing you know but he may not you know voice out the you know how he feels about it but what matters is that he gives me the support that i need but i know that deep down some some of the things i do or some of the things i tell him i'm doing may not make sense right so i know that one thing in life is that like i just live life with that assurance that god will never leave me hanging so sometimes when i want to do certain things right let me give you an example when i was going to before i launched beauty by telsey i think i had told this story sometime or if i haven't i will one day right i had so many doubts i had so many doubts like the fear oh my god i need to tell that story one day because something major happened that was meant to make me get discouraged from launching beauty by telsey but the more i prayed was the more i got the confirmation that this is what you're supposed to be doing at this season of your life like God likes, God loves the impossible. I don't know if that makes sense. God loves the impossible. Oh. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm a living testimony. God loves when you allow him play his role in your life. Honestly, God is like almighty. So he will never leave you. And whenever I'm praying and I know that I'm scared of the outcome of something or a project I'm embarking on, I'm always like, God, you know that if this thing flops, it's you and I, you. I've publicly projected you that you're the only one I have. So... That's not how we can feel. And I'm telling you, there is nothing. Beauty by Chelsea is a living, like it's a testimony. One day I will tell my story. Number four advice I would give my younger self is, no matter what you do, do not lose yourself in the process. Sometimes the conversation goes in the lines of, oh, when I was younger, I used to. Why, why, like, why is it in the past? Why is it in the past? Why is a dream that God gave you in the past? Why? Why is something that God told you to do? Why is it a thing of the past? There's a reason God gave it to you. And one thing we need to understand is that if God gives you a dream, a vision, or a goal, and you don't use it, it's not going to go back to God void. God will take that gift and give it to somebody else. Go and read your Bible. What happened with this um, parable of the talents? If God gives you a gift and you don't make use of it, 
God will take that gift. It's not going to remain void without achieving its purpose on earth. That gift is going to be taken and given to somebody else who will make adequate use of that gift. Like, I don't want you to look back and be saying there was a time that I was. Whatever happened in the past stays in the past. Rekindle that vision. Rekindle that dream. Rekindle that goal. Like, this is not the time to, you know, this is not the time to stay and be living in regrets. No, like, we don't have time for that. We learn from what has happened and we'll make the future and our present better. I'm telling you, whatever it is that God put in your heart, whatever it is that God has put in your heart, God didn't choose to put it in Ginika's heart, right? There's a reason that God chose you in particular to give that vision. There's a reason that God chose you to put that idea. Don't tell me about how it was a dream you had in the past. When I was younger, I'm telling you now, I always dreamt of helping people to um, to be better. I always dreamt of being the reason why somebody else will wake up and be like, you know what, I'm done playing games. I'm about, to, like, I'm ready to now take my life to the next level. I always dreamt of that. There was a dream I had shared in the past with someone and I told her that I saw myself being in a place or in a position where I inspire ladies. Maybe the way I had imagined it is not the way it's playing out right now, but by the grace of God, I, I know that God is using me to help people, ladies in particular, to be better, to live better lives, to pick up themselves back up and to believe in themselves again. Whatever dream that God has put in your heart and you got to a point where you just let that dream die I'm telling you now it's time to pick it back up. There's nothing like I used to be a singer I used to sing so well. The, what is happening with you is that you didn't do anything with the gift that God has given you And now God is not going to leave the gift to waste, to waste Right if you read your Bible, you will find or read the um, parable of the talents. If you do not use the gift that God has given you, it will be taken away. It's that simple. So I need you today, if there is anything that keeps, you know, coming back to your mind, oh yeah, there was a time you used to this, there was a time you used to that. This is the time to tell God you're so sorry for not making use of that gift and you're ready to do that now. I'm telling you like your life, God, like I wish we understood the, like the access we have within us. Some people, that dream that you left hanging, that dream that you didn't do anything with, is the key to your next level. I need you to understand, like it's deeper, like it's deeper than you can imagine. I'm telling you the truth, like that dream could just be the thing missing in all the years you've been praying, God change my finances, change my finances, change. That dream could just be everything. I'm telling you now, let this be a sign. The sign you've been praying for, this is the sign. I'm telling you now, what has happened has happened. But remember, you can always pick yourself back up any day, any time and continue from where you stop. Also, I need to talk about how in most cases you see people who will say things like, oh, I used to be a career babe. I used to be hot. I used to, you know, dress so nice. Now I don't even know what happened to me. I'm telling you, sometimes for some people, they just, you know, move to a different career and now no longer have time for themselves. For some people, they maybe had kids, got married, and eventually got to the point where all those things that they used to do in terms of things that made them look and feel good, they don't do it anymore. I am always constantly working on myself. I keep reminding myself that Ginika, before your kids, before your husband, you are you, you are Ginika. God created you Ginika before you became a mom. Before you became a wife, you are first Ginika, your first God's child, your first God's daughter. There are things that you are before these other things were added. So you need to not lose the core of who you are, the core of your existence. All those things that made you or used to make you feel and look good, go back to them. So far, they are not things that are against what God has asked us to do. Like if you know that you've gained weight, I am constantly always making an effort. Even when I fail, even when I break it or whatever, I keep making an effort to go back. You know, recently I joined, um, a fitness group, just a group that will help me stay motivated, you know, make efforts. It doesn't have to be perfect, right? It doesn't have to be 100%. At the end of the day, what matters is the bits and pieces of the effort you're making. That is what eventually 
positions you to see the bigger result. Don't keep looking back and saying, oh, there was a time that I was like this, there was a time. Make an effort. It may not be 100% the same anymore, but that effort you make, you realize that you feel so good. You feel like yourself again. Everything will just gradually align. I'm telling you, it works like magic. Number five is do not let jealousy make you diss the people that God has put to help you go to the next level. This is very important. I'm telling you, like, jealousy is not a bad thing, but it becomes a bad thing when it starts to eat you up, when it starts to take away your peace of mind, when it starts to, you know, make you, instead of being able to open your mind to learn from people, to learn from someone, you constantly find yourself in a situation where you are looking for a fault in everything they do. You are looking for a fault in every post they make. Do not let, because guess what happens? The enemy will make you, that person that maybe when they put up or oh, they're advertising a webinar, right? Or when they put up or oh, they're advertising a program. And in that program, they were meant to teach you something that you do not know. Remember, you don't know it. Now, the enemy will make you start looking for the issues in that their whatever their flyer, their events, the way they do, the way they behave, the way they dress, and everything. The enemy will make you take your mind off of the most important thing, which is that thing that you are supposed to learn from that person. And when that happens, you find yourself, instead of learning from them, you constantly diss them. You constantly look for errors in what they did. You now find that your mind and your goal now gets totally distracted from the thing that God has put that person in your life to do. Remember, it's not only the people who are close to you that are there to play a role in your life. Sometimes the people that are there to play a role in your life are the people that you never get to meet. But God has put them there because you could have come across anybody's post. But there's a reason why certain people came on your feed, right? Certain people just, you know, got recommended by um, the algorithm, right? So those are some people that maybe God has actually put them in your way because they are meant to be the people that are supposed to now help you get to the next level, right? They are meant to teach you the, the thing you're looking, teach you the thing you're looking to learn, help you understand how certain things work, give you an opportunity for you to ask them questions so that through those questions now, you can get the answer to what you're looking for. But guess what? The enemy will make you be there. Instead of learning from these people, you're constantly sitting around looking for, oh yeah, why is she talking like that? Who does she think she is? She doesn't think she's anybody because she doesn't even know you. She thinks she is herself. She thinks she is who God has created her to be. She doesn't even know you exist. And you're there killing yourself. Instead of, you know, this thing that they're advertising, you can actually learn from them. Sign up for it. Learn what you want to learn and move on. Now, let me tell you one way to heal from jealousy. Guess what? You don't. You cannot just wake up Close your eye and open and jealousy disappears. It can only happen by the help of the Holy Spirit. I am telling you, like, if you find yourself in that situation where you are feeling a little bit jealous about someone, your feelings may be valid. Maybe they did something to you that warranted that action or warranted you feeling that way. Your feelings are valid. But what matters is that this feeling you're having, it's not a healthy one. It's not one you want to keep. So you ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Help me not even think about these people in this light. And if there is something you have put them in my space to do for me, let me not be so blinded to their errors, to their faults, to the human things I see that I miss out on the reason you brought them my way. That is one prayer you say. I'm telling you, you wake up one day and you realize that you don't even notice all those things anymore. And they will play the role they came to play in your life and they will just go. You, my friend, need to heal from that jealousy because trust me, the enemy knows how to use all these kind of things like jealousy, envy against you. Instead of you to learn from these people, in some cases, you're not even jealous of anything reasonable. I'm telling you, let go of that jealousy and do not let yourself diss the people that God has put to help you go to the next level. That is the thing I don't want you to do. Number six is, above everything, do not ever forget that the most important relationship out of all these things is a relationship with God. I'm telling you, take it from somebody who has tried without God 
and tried with God and I can tell you the difference like there is just that peace that comes when you know that you are dealing with the one who has the power to the entire universe like that is the peace that I want to live with every single day of my life not even ever worrying about where the next money will come from not ever worrying about the things that on a normal day our human minds want us to worry about i'm telling you like try god and try god wholeheartedly not when you're trying god and you're giving him conditions up and down try him hold wholeheartedly get to know god for who he is not based on what you were told in sunday school not based on what your parents told you not based on what your siblings told you not based on what your church told you get to know god for god and like you come back to tell me. There's, let me not tell you because I, I will be telling you from my experience. I want you to experience it for yourself and then you'll be the one to come back and tell me. Last but not the least, I am telling you, avoid complicated relationships. Avoid whatever kind of relationship ever. Avoid relationships that stress you unnecessarily. You don't want to be living and trying to figure people out. You're not mathematics. Why would you be a mystery all the time? Either they don't value you that much or you deserve more peace than you, you are giving yourself credit for. I hope that you guys had a good time today hanging out with me, discussing these things. Let me know your biggest takeaway. I can't wait to read all your comments and I'll see you guys in my next video. Please subscribe. Oh. If you watch this video, you like it. Click the subscribe button. It's free. Click the like button. It's free. You don't take more of your data, more of your internet by clicking it. Please now help your sister. Okay, I'll see you guys at the top. Bye. -ya.